So what I'm gonna do now is kind of go through uh, a little overview of what we've built um, so far. So starting off with, we had three key premises when we went to build this solution. DR has always been complicated, it's always been costly, it's always been time consuming. There was no way to bring it to the masses, right? We believe that this solution is a way to bring it to a much larger audience. And the three premise is it's gotta be simple. It's got to be easy to manage, easy to use. We're, we're combining multiple different technologies with the, the private cloud VMware, with the public cloud AD, AWS. So we have to make it easy for folks to be able to manage this. Second, it's got to be cost optimized. You know, we, we've looked and I've talked to so many customers that have started exploring with AWS and, and other clouds out there. And you actually hear some stories where they've gone in there and didn't know how to optimize the infrastructure and they end up paying more than they would if they kept it on premise. If things are done right, I think we've proven now that we can keep those costs really small and really uh, change the way people do things. And then third, we want it to be a complete solution. And this, this is actually really important because there's other products out there that, that say they can throw data up into the cloud and so forth, but that's not DR. DR is to be able to reliably protect your data, and in our case, up in, into the cloud, be able to fail over, if you actually have a failover, to run that, and that, that's not just running the, the VM itself, but you have to have the whole network topology built around it to run it efficiently and effectively with your existing environment. And then you need to be able to efficiently get that data back on premise. So we're, we, we, right from the ground up, we said that we are not gonna go to market until we can have a complete end-to-end -end solution, and that's what we've built. We can get the data up there, we can run it up there, we protect the data while it's running up there, meaning that that's your primary data if you failed over in AWS, we're gonna protect that data to meet the same SLA that, that we were protecting when it was on premise. And then we're gonna get that data back so you're running back in your primary data center. Okay, so using those three premises, we'll start to run through this. So ease of use has gotta start from the installation. We deploy our product through a simple OVA deployment. That's a, a, a VM deployment in your primary data center. Once that is deployed, we power on that VM and we ask a couple simple questions. The first is, what's your VMware credentials? So that we can go off and discover, just like we discovered in our insight tool, and we're able to model for the customer, we're going to do that same discovery here um, so that we can blueprint that environment and prepare it to be uh, uh, virtualized uh, and build a virtual data center in AWS. Second is your AWS credentials, right? So we, we do need to have the access and secret key so that we can go out and build infrastructure in AWS. Once we do that, we run through what we call the bootstrap process. So our bootstrap process, everything that you see here in green, is a fully automated process. Typically takes about 10 minutes to complete. What we're doing here is, in essence, building a bridge from your primary data center to AWS. And very quickly, and again, we're gonna go into a lot more detail of this in the closed session, but we have a couple of virtual appliances, the OCVA, which is the One Cloud Virtual Appliance Management Server. That's where all of our brains are. That's our database um, uh, and manages the whole interaction. And that's where you go and manage our solution uh, through the UI. And we have a second VM, which is we call it the worker. It's responsible for moving bits back and forth between the primary data center and the cloud. Then we go up into AWS and we create and build out a VPC, a virtual private cloud. That's a secure network for the customer. This is the customer's network up in AWS. Inside there, we have a, uh, a, a, the same, similar uh, virtual appliances. We, the manager is replicated between the two, so we can actually manage our solution from either on-prem or in AWS. And we also have the notion of a worker who does things similar, but obviously from the AWS perspective, it's tied to the different tiers of storage and, and such in AWS, but also responsible for moving bits and failing over the VMs up in the cloud. 
Once this is complete, we feel like now we have the bridge in place. Now we can start to layer on the, the appropriate use cases. And, and obviously, as Mark said, DR is, is a use case that we've gone after first. So what do we do? So as soon as we're deployed, we've discovered that environment. Now we're gonna go out there and the first step we do is to create what we call protection groups. You create a protection group, you apply a policy to that group. So what is the SLA that you wanna associate with that group? So what is the RPO objectives for that group? Is it one hour, two hours, four hours, eight, 10, 12? You can configure that within our solution because by defining the SLA, you're doing a couple things because the lower the RPO, the more often we have to send data across. But that's fine, that might be the, the objectives for that application. But if you have other applications you don't need to protect at that same level, that, that gives us the ability to only send across data at, at, at less frequent intervals. Well, that's gonna over, uh, reduce your cost overall because of the amount of time that our, our VMs have to run, how much cleaning we have to do, and so forth. So there is cost associated with this, something that I don't think anybody has done this before. You either had all, you know, protect all all the time, or you had back up and, and configure it later. So we're, we're giving something new to the market. So you create these protection groups, you assign an SLA to it, and then you simply drag your VMs that you want to protect into these protection groups. As soon as you do that, we will start to protect to meet that SLA. So what we do is we leverage uh, VMware snapshot technology, take a quick snapshot of the data, we convert it into our own format and store it on tier one, tier, or tier two, tier three storage on premise, compress it, and free up those snapshots. So we're not having any impact on the primary data center. Once we do that, we're able to send that compressed data up into AWS. That's the first time. Sorry, is that a crash consistent snapshot that's being done or is that quiescent in the file system? It is a quiescent in the file system. So the answer is we are quiescent in the fire system, right? Okay, so that, the first time we do it, we have to do a full seed of the data to AWS. And then after that point, we'll, lay, we'll leverage uh, change block tracking, and we only have to send across deltas so from that point on. Just yep. To get back to that last sure. Question, Absolutely. If I have a bunch of Windows VMs and I have SQL or Exchange or something like that, you are tying into VS has to take that. We are. Is there also, so, yep, go ahead. Yep. is there technology built into tiering within Amazon as well then through the different storage platforms or? Yes, and, and so that there? question, if you don't mind, uh, we're gonna go into detail of okay. all the things that we're gonna do in, up in Amazon for optimization uh, in the closed session. Okay. Okay, so we'll hold off on, on, on answering that question for How about when you being. build the, it looks like once you do the initialization, you build a VPC it, we do, yes. Do you build that with the same IP space that's on, on so, something different? We treat this as a separate site. So the way, uh, the, the core of our philosophy is that we're actually... Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so the core of our product is... Is to really treat it as a separate site. So uh, like Dan had mentioned, up front we ask you for some credentials, but we also ask you for some information around what kind of non adjustable space that do you have so that we can go off and build out a separate VPC. Once it's done, it's completely live. You could connect to it to a VPG and make use of it that way or let our product just run and run through DR. Does your product, uh, when it's estimating in that demo video that we saw, when it's estimating cost, does it also start estimating the network costs of doing all of this? Sort of stuff as well. So, so yes, and, and we'll again we'll go into detail for you okay. on that. But great question, great question. Okay, so uh, to, to go off of that, that uh, the answer that Suresh just just provided here. So we perform two types of of failovers up in AWS. We do have a non-disruptive uh, test where we create the subnet. Again, these subnets will be in that that CIDR range that you provided during the bootstrap process. Um, VMs come up, you can test them, you can cancel your test, and once you cancel that test, uh, those VMs are cleaned up. Now, if we go off and do a production failover, we do things a little bit different on our end. Because this is your primary uh, data, we're now gonna protect that data, as I said before, just like we, would protect, we are protecting your data when it's on the primary data center. We also have what we call our extended networks. 
Uh, we're automating as many pieces of the process that we can day one. One of the ones that we're gonna uh, work with some customers and partners with is, is, is this extended network piece where you need to be able to provide a, either a site-to-site -site, uh, VPN between the, your primary data center and, a, and your VPC up in AWS so that your applications can, can talk to each other. So AWS has multiple ways of doing this. Uh, you can leverage virtual VPN appliances um, that, that are available up in AWS. They have what they call their virtual private ga gateway, their VPG, um, that you can connect to your gateway on-prem. And for larger customers, where it does make sense, there also is uh, this notion of direct connect, so a dedicated pipe between your primary data center and AWS. So we've been, you know, we've been uh, working through all of these um, uh, use cases ourselves, uh, and because each customer's environment is different, you know, we'll work with them to make sure that that is properly uh, configured. So you're saying you've been working with vendors like, like firewall vendors, whatever, so they can nail up a, a VPN tunnel during the failover or? So, so answer that, so we, we, yes, we've talked to different vendors and, and we see some good synergy and potential partnerships with, with uh, some of the network providers. Um, but most of these network providers already have virtual VPN appliances available in AWS in the AWS marketplace. So if you were to go up there on AWS Marketplace, search on VPN, I mean, you're gonna get pages and pages. So it, what the good part is, is if customers running Cisco on their primary data center, well, there's a Cisco CSR, cloud uh, VPN appliance that you can run and you can actually manage it from your primary data center. Does that answer, does that answer your question? Yeah. Is there any assumption that the primary data center is, is there some component of it that has to stay up for this to work? No, so that's, that's, that's why there's different things. So, uh, I mean, that's a great question. So, I mean, 85, 90% of, of DR events are partial events. So in those cases, you, you very well, most likely will have your primary data center. So a VPG is, or a direct connect is, 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 will help solve those situations. But, right, in case of a hurricane, whatever disaster, Sandy or whatever, um, you will need to have client connectivity mm -hmm. to that site. So most, not all, of the v virtual VPN appliances that are up in AWS Marketplace support client connectivity. So what we recommend, and again, this is what we work with our partners to help their customers, or we work directly with the customer, is, is to make sure that you have that virtual VPN in place. Now, it probably can be turned off for 99% of the time, so you're not paying uh, the cost of it, but tested, tested regularly, just like you test your applications, te test your virtual VPN, turn it on, make sure it works, but in a case of a disaster, you're able to come up and have that, that connectivity. When you, and when you bring up the migrated hosts in the AWS environment, it is unique address space? It is a unique address space, correct. Dependency on DNS being configured and working uh, Yes, yes so. there is, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely, yep. And that's something, again, part of that extended network, we work with them, the, you know, during these test phases, we can um, get those um, situated. And I think one other important comment is our management console is also available in AWS. So you're, you're able to continue to manage our solution, but you're managing it now from AWS versus from on-prem. Give a plug-in from the VMware website? As well, uh, we we yeah we don't have we today we don't have a, a vCenter plugin. Uh, I know it's something we've we've talked about. We'll we'll see moving forward, right? You yeah. mentioned too you you protect the data once you have failed over. Did, does that just go to another AWS instance? Is that so, so I'm not sure. I, you I, mentioned I, we failed over and you're still protecting the data. Like, do you, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. So what we do, we leverage uh, EBS snapshots. So EBS snapshots uh, uh, is, is an AWS terminology, elastic block storage. So when you run a VM, it's, it's, it runs in EBS storage, right? EBS snapshots is AWS's way of protecting that against all other availability zones within a region. So US East is a region. Within it, there are five, I believe, five different data centers. They're all called availability zones. By doing that, that EBS snapshot is protected across all five. Okay. Yep. So if we lose one, we can restore from the other. Okay. Yep. So now on the fail back. 
So we have special technology that we've, that we've designed where we can initially, if, if you haven't lost that primary data center, and because we keep a copy of the data on-prem, we'd be able to do a, a delta failback to the primary data center, reducing the time it takes to get the data back, as well as the cost. Because in, in all public clouds, when you, it's you know, free to get the data in, but it costs to pull the data out. So by, by just doing the deltas, we're able to significantly reduce the cost to get your primary data center back up. But obviously we will certainly support the full uh, push of the data back to your primary, whoops, back to your primary data center.